This India Ink tutorial will show you how to draw an eye, lightly layer value to create depth, and to add some colorful ink to give it just that area of emphasis. This is perfect for beginners or intermediate or even advanced artists because you can show off your skills based on where you are. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly tutorial. Starting out, I'm going to lightly sketch my eye with a pencil. Um, and I'm not gonna worry about any shading or any detail, just my basic shapes and my composition. What I love about this artwork is you can make your eye a human eye, it can be realistic, it can be a zombie, an animal, anime, whatever you would like, your style can really shine through. Who says it just has to be a plain basic human eye, which is what I'm doing, but the opportunities are endless to show off your creativity. And again, I'm keeping things very simple, just focusing on my basic shapes. I could have drawn this a little bit bigger, but I'm going to do a little bit of splatter paint in the background to kind of play around with all that empty space. I am including the eyelid crease and a little shadow underneath. If you've never drawn an eye before, I highly recommend looking at images, which I've drawn lots of eyes, but I'm still going to do that too. Your next step is going to be to lightly apply value. If you're new to India Ink, working with value can be tricky. Click the link above and I'll talk you through how to make a value scale focusing on dark to light values. I'm a little nervous about the eye area, so I'm putting kind of a light to medium gray as the skin tone underneath my eye because I know that this is a shadow and it doesn't have to look like anything in particular. I am looking at a photograph of an eye. You could photograph one yourself. Just make sure not to directly copy another artist's work or directly copy a photograph you just found on the internet. I know that this is a dark area, looking at my darks and lights, so I'm just kind of outlining that with a light gray. The thing with India ink is you can always add more but you can layer to make it dark, but you can't erase or control alt delete. So I'm filling in from the lid um, to the crease with my light gray, and you can see I've created little wells of ink. Again, if you've never done that before, I pre-made these as I described in the video that I listed the link before. So I like to have little wells of ink the pure ink you can see has tape next to it, that's pure black, and I kind of avoid using that until I'm really done mapping out my lighter values. I really love that lighter gray, and you can see I'm kind of going back over it, paying attention to the creases. So this is where the shadow would be and would be a really dark area, but I'm hesitant to use black right from the jump. I'm gonna save that for my final details once I have everything mapped out and have my values kind of keyed together. Light is best, you can see me adding a little bit of dark. Look how long of a way that black goes. I have the tiniest little dip of my brush. So what you see me doing here is a wet and wet technique. That's where I had an area that hadn't quite dried yet and I directly am mixing darker India ink on top of it and spreading it out with a brush. If you make a mistake, you can soften it as I'm doing here with a more water on your brush and you can always blot with a paper towel. So you can pre-mix your values, you can mix on the paper. I highly recommend practicing it first. So sketching things out, or that's an important step, but also playing around with the material. If you're not new to painting or India ink, you will feel very um, used to this technique, but if it's your first time trying to control India ink, I highly recommend practicing. So here's a rare time where I'm gonna use black because I know my pupil is solid black. And I also know that there's a deep shadow where my eye is creasing and where there's kind of like the shadow where the nose is going to be. So I'm going back in, India ink dries very quickly as you can see, and I'm making that shadow, making that crease really stand out. The beauty of this is it doesn't have to be a realistic eye, so even if it's not exactly how an eye looks and it's more exaggerated, that's totally fine. Now I'm finally committing to my eye itself and I want to use a very light gray, so lots of water here, to make it look like the white part of my eye is going back into space, but going back into my eyelid and is round. So I'm putting a nice, very light shadow on the outer edges. Again, you can build up to this, so I'm always going to be doing light layering of my lightest grays first. I love this crease or this corner um, where your tear duct is, and if I had red ink, which I really wanted to use, but apparently I don't have any, um, I think that'd be really beautiful to add some red ink there. But what I'm doing now is just giving that nice shadow. You can see it bled a little bit because I'm doing a wet on wet technique. So either soften that with your brush without ink on it, um, or take a paper towel and blot it if things ever kind of get out of control. Now I'm gonna do the bottom lid and it needs to be, and this is an area I struggle with, but I want there to be like a white lid where the eyelashes are gonna be. 
So make sure to leave a gap between where the eye is and where the eyelid or shadow is so that you have that nice kind of white, lightest gray area or even white area that you're then gonna add eyelashes to. Now that's if you're doing a realistic eye or an eye that resembles a human. Um, but again, that's totally optional. And I feel like I have some detail around my eye and now I'm gonna kind of spread out and back away a little bit. So I'm gonna add an eyebrow and you can also see that at added a little bit of gray to resemble skin. So your eyebrow shape can be whatever eyebrow shape you would like, um, depends on what you're into. So you can see it kind of like is heavier to the left and then it kind of fades out and gets smaller as it goes. Now I know I'm gonna be adding some fine lines to this, but this is just kind of a good shape and your eyebrow could be really dark, um, it could be lighter, you could make it heavier, thinner, um, and an eyebrow is a really great tool to show expression. You've probably noticed that I do a lot of layering. I will do a lot of adding um, darker grays, even lighter grays on top of there. And I am doing a little procrastinating. The iris I know is gonna be a very key moment in this artwork. And so I am avoiding a little bit, kind of hammering down that detail with my colorful ink. I'm gonna to commit to a little bit of a darker shadow on the right side of my eye as well. Um, and again, using a reference image for me is very important, whether it's your own eye or something that you photograph yourself or even that you find on the internet. Just make sure not to plagiarize. If you're using a reference image, you should change enough of it so that it's your own work and not copying someone else's. So you could even just Google a photograph of an eye and just use the basic structure for inspiration. Um, it's gonna translate very differently with ink. It would be fun to take a photograph of your own eye too. So I have all my grays. I'm kind of going back in and working on my shadows, paying attention to my darks and my lights. And I think I'm gonna go back and give my eyebrow a little bit more attention and let that be a really kind of heavy, dark, emphasized area. So I'm gonna use my smaller brush at first and I'm gonna do a little bit of a wet on wet technique so you can see that the, uh, the black really went into the other area. So I'm just gonna take a larger brush and I'm just gonna spread that out. So I'm mixing kind of my value directly on my paper. Now that my eyebrow is so dark, I feel like I need to bump up the value or the shadows in my eye. I want it to really look like there's um, a shadow on each end to really give it that round three-dimensional effect. So I'm layering a little bit of a darker gray on top of that light gray that I already added. Um, just to give it a little more extra, especially since the eyebrow is so dark and so dominant, it really stands out. Now for the scariest part of all, the eyelashes. And I'm gonna be using this really small brush to start blocking in my eyelashes. And I'm going up and towards the right, um, smaller lashes towards the end and a little bit bigger towards the center. So you can see the eyelash kind of bled a little bit in the wet ink, so I'm just kind of absorbing some of that with this brush. Um, there's a lot of different tools you can use. You can use a small brush, you can use a nib, um, or I'm gonna show you a kind of unconventional tool later in the video that you can use as well. Most of this will be with a brush, um, and you can see I'm kind of skipping the middle part doing, as I go towards the left, up and to the left, as I go towards the center, the lashes kind of go in the center, if that makes sense, and then they go up and towards the right as you go from there. I think eyelashes is one of the more difficult parts um, because you might have this really nicely developed eye and then the eyelashes might look too chunky or they might just not look the way you want them. So use your reference image, but also look at other images of eyes. And if you're going for a naturalistic effect, really pay attention to the shape, the size, and the direction of the lashes. Yes, that can be different based on which eyes you look at, but there is kind of like a standard formula for the most part. So speaking of a standard formula, you can see I put a couple small lashes down at the bottom. They were a little thick, so I got nervous and went back and just doubled up, added more lashes on the top for nice, you know, full Maybelline inspired eyelashes. And the bottom is more thin. Okay, I'm gonna now use Dr. P.H. Martin's Colorful India Ink. There's also the brand Bombay in here. Um, I bought some metallics and I also have some blues and greens. Um, iridescent is really fun to use because it has this nice shimmer effect. I really wanted to use red. It's October. I thought I could make like really nice blood vessels and kind of a gory Halloween eye, but red was the only color I didn't have, so I'm just going with it. So I'm doing a wet on wet technique where I add water and then I do small dabs of this jade. Watch how it spreads out. That's very satisfying. Make sure your pupil is completely dry if you do that first because that black will interact with the colorful ink if not. A paper towel is a really useful tool at this point because as you can see, the India ink kind of swims around in the water and it kind of bleeds out of the area I drew. So I'm gonna kind of use my paper towel to create texture and to blot any unwanted water. 
So I'm just gonna dab in and add a little bit more ink. Um, you can see it did drip down into the eye, so I'm gonna kind of, not outline, but give it a, a more closed shape, if that makes sense. Um, and then kind of dab and overlap to get some darker effects. Now the beauty of this is I have this blue ink, and so my eyes are blue with a hint of green, so this works very well for me. But again, this doesn't have to be realistic. Your eyes could be red, they could be gold and silver, or you could just stick to a black and gray color scheme. So this blue ink I'm dabbing into my wet areas. So again, this is a wet on wet technique so that it can like travel in the pools of water. And I'm using my brush to give it that classic iris kind of meet in the middle and kind of expand out um, texture. And I'm going over my green with the blue. You can see my pupil is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as my ink kind of expands past that line that I drew. So keep in mind that water and ink does have a mind of its own. Try to control it, maybe let it dry a little bit, but also know that it's gonna do what it wants. So I really want to create drama here and I'm adding black directly to my blue and green to give it a shadow um, because the image I'm looking at when drawing this or painting, I should say, has a really nice shadow and I think with the heavy eyebrow and the heavy, heavy shadows and dark grays that I've used, this will give it just a nice round dramatic effect. Just using a little bit more blue to dab it into that black so it's not so um, awkward but it has a more harmony to it. So it's more of a dark blue and green than just solid black. So I'm going to continue these steps just playing around with it. Um, I do think I got it a little bit muddy, so if that happens, sometimes it's good to put things away and come back to it with fresh eyes or even after it dries a little bit. And I know I'm going to add a little bit more detail to that pupil as well. Um, now that it's dried a little bit on my edges, adding a little bit more of a shadow, knowing that it's not going to spread out because the ink and water has dried a little bit. Tapping in some blue to fade in and to give it more of that unified effect. I'm really enjoying this. I am trying to leave some areas white. As you can see, um, I'm leaving those two kind of spots so that there's a nice highlight around the eye as well. I want a nice balance of darks and a nice balance of lights with this eye work of art. I'm really excited about the metallic inks I purchased. And so I'm using this gold. I will say it kind of separated in the container and the really bright yellow gold is at the bottom. And this is more of like a bronze. It's still pretty. It's not exactly what I wanted. And because the ink hasn't dried, it's kind of blending into the blue and kind of browning out a little bit. So I'm not as happy with the gold as I thought I would be. I can always go back once it's dry and you can see me kind of like correcting with blue on there. I got a little scared at this point because I'm like, ooh, all that nice like blue green work I did kind of got muddied up a little bit. That's a lesson, sometimes less is more, which is um, advice I always give my students but don't always follow myself. Um, so I'm just taking my paper towel and trying to pull some of that muddiness that I created. And I have a nice highlight here, so I have no regrets. I feel like that kind of corrects it at this point and I can always go back and layer more, but I don't want it to dry too muddy. I think that gold will be nice. Um, when things are a little bit more dry. I'm gonna add some of that jade in there to get that nice green color back in and not that muddy brown that the gold created. I have one more color I wanna play with and that is the silver metallic ink that I have. Um, I have everything dry because I don't want it to mix. I want it to act like a highlight. So I'm using white as a highlight, but I thought this um, iridescent silver would be a really nice extra touch. So before I kind of get that in there, I'm going to doctor up this pupil a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, give it a few gaps like the eye is twinkling and there's a highlight, but also some reflected light of the blue and jade that I've been using. So unlike the gold of this brand, the silver is really perfect. It has um, just this beautiful, clear, a really consistent glow to it. So I'm using it like a highlight, but also keeping in mind that the white will be lighter, but I'm thinking where do I want my eye to kind of have some shine to it, some sparkle, obviously in the iris, I want that to have as much depth as possible, but I'm also thinking it would look really good um, in the skin, especially in that part of the eyelid where I added those small little eyelashes. So you can see I'm kind of going back over that and that gives it kind of like a wet, I vibe. I'm toning down that darker gray that I created um, and I really like how subtle it is. You can barely see it but when you notice it and you see the shine it's just gorgeous. I'm playing around a little bit with the silver. I feel pretty much done. I'm really loving how it's just giving it just a little pop of depth and now I'm going to go back in and focus on some fine lines and details with a bamboo skewer which is an unconventional material to use but it's what I have in the classroom. 
You could be doing this with a nib, like a really fine brush, but I love the line work that this bamboo skewer, which is what you use to make shish kebabs, um, I love the line work that it creates. So I'm just gonna go back into the areas that I wanna have those fine lines and not like that smooth wash blending that I've been doing, so I'm thinking hair. And I think just those fine lines will give it that finished quality that I'm looking for. I'm pretty happy with the eyelashes, but I know I need to add a little bit to the bottom. Um, I was nervous using that tiny brush I had, so I think I'll have more success using this bamboo skewer. I'm doing the eyebrows first because it's less scary. Um, eyebrows can be wild and crazy, and it won't really, um, the shape of it and the lines, you know, it's not gonna determine the success of the eye, whereas the eyelashes are kind of that finishing touch that really makes or breaks the artwork, in my opinion. So I'm just going in and using this for fine lines. And I do like how the small brush made a variety of grays. Some are darker and lighter than others. And I'm gonna use my skewer to add those small little lashes. And again, you should be using a reference image, if not looking in the mirror, looking at your eye yourself. Look at how the eyelashes are different on the top and bottom. And the eyelashes on the bottom are connected to the lid. So the silver highlight that I created, the eyelashes actually like go into that. Whereas the top eyelash, they kind of come like from underneath. So definitely use a reference image or make sure you're looking at your own eye in the mirror. And if you're using an in image you found on the internet, just make sure not to copy it directly. Plagiarism is real, whether it's in English class or when creating art. So always find inspiration, but also find your own voice and your own vision when creating. Feeling pretty good, feeling pretty happy. I'm just being particular about my lashes, where they are, kind of filling them in. Um, this is the stage where I really think it's beneficial to take a break, hang it on the walls, take a few steps back and look at it. Um, when in doubt, let it dry and come back to it um, in 20 minutes or the next day. So sometimes holding things up from a distance really helps. So as I'm looking at my final details here, I'm thinking, okay, what's missing? What can be improved? And knowing when to stop is one of the hardest things about being an artist because it's so easy to just keep going and going and going. Because I never take my own advice of keep it simple and less is more, I'm gonna do a little splatter around the white areas, edges of my painting. So I'm just taking some India ink on one brush and gently tapping with the second to give it a little bit of splatter, just some visual interest on the sides. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of some drip work around the eye. Yes, I know it's a little cliche, like an eye crying. I get it, it's something that's kind of overdone, but I love dripped ink. I think it's so pretty. Um, and I think it fits the vibe, it fits the theme. And it doesn't have to be tears, it can just be ink splatter. And so I just wanted to give it a little bit more, and also I just think it looks good. So I'm just having some ink kind of drip off the page in one area. I could definitely go all the way around if I wanted or do my edges. And I feel really happy with this. I love playing around with the different techniques. I think the pop of color is just right. And I feel finished. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more tutorials, check these out. Also, if you wanna know what my students are up to in my classroom right now, find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore Machado.